Hello, my name is Vesa Juvonen, and in this video we will have a closer look on the setup and code for creating uh, site collections in on-premises using client-side object model. So this is the solution what we have available from the blog post as well. And let's have a slightly uh, quick look on the code uh, and the structure of the solution. So I'm going to zoom in on the, on the solution, uh, solution structure. And first of all, you'll see here uh, the scripts folder. Uh, so there are two scripts uh, which we will have a close look uh, really fast, uh, which we need to actually run within your environment to make the site collection creation available within the on-prem. And then the, all of the rest of this is just that typical provider hosted application in on-prem. In my case, I'm using uh, the ACS, uh, well, meaning low trust uh, OAuth model in my on-premises as well. Uh, but this code works perfectly fine if you enable uh, the server-to-server -server authentication in the on-premises as well. Let's have a quick look on those uh, PowerShells. Uh, so first of all, let's have a look on the enabling of the on-prem uh, site collection creation uh, using the CSM. Uh, this is pretty simple uh, PowerShell. Uh, only thing what you need to update is essentially the application URL where you want to have this capability enabled. Uh, so that's the parameter which you need to just update. Uh, and then after that, uh, you just execute the code. And what we essentially do is that we put this new uh, assembly, uh, Microsoft.online.sharepoint dedicated tenant admin server stop to be available on the server side. Uh, within your SharePoint farm to be called using client-side object model. That's an assembly which is uh, part of the April CU, 2014 April CU for SharePoint 2013. So you need to have the April CU installed in your on-prem uh, when you execute uh, this PowerShell. The other thing what we need to do is, is we need to select a one site collection to be uh, quote unquote the tenant administrator. So you don't need to really create a tenant administration site. Uh, you can just choose, uh, for example, a site collection or a, a whatever random or root site in the, in the web application be uh, the tenant administrator site. Uh, and we just mark that uh, as a property or enum, a property enum uh, for the site collection. And then that's mainly because there are well shared code between the Microsoft Online and this on-prem CSM capability. So we just need to, that's just a prereq. It doesn't really change any behavior on the site collection or it doesn't impact any future behavior of the site collection as well. Uh, the one one interesting thing about this one is that you when you whenever you which site collection you choose to be the tenant administrator, if that is a hostname site collection, then the creation of the sites will be hostname site collections as well. Uh, if that's a path based site collection, then all the site collections what we create will be path based site collections as well. So the capability does support path based and as a hostname site collections. Let's move back on the code uh, and let's execute the code. Uh, the code itself is, is relatively simple. So I'm going to press just F5 uh, and we're going to work through the code uh, using the debugger whenever we actually get things up and running. I've already deployed the code, so it's not asking me any permissions uh, on this particular deployment. So it's going to redirect me directly to the uh, provider hosted app. And within my provider hosted app, I'm able to pick uh, whatever template I want. So these are not actually out of the box templates. I have a team, Uber team and Uber uh, Super Team templates. Um, and this could be just team, whatever, well, advanced team side or a project side, and then you provision always out of the box team side, but then you customize that based on, for example, the requirements. So you could have document libraries, content type, site columns, uh, branding, whatever you want. Um, this example, uh, it is executing the stuff in a synchronous, uh, sorry, in a synchronous mode. Uh, but in reality, you probably want to re uh, store this request to a SharePoint list and then have a remote timer job executing these requests uh, from that against the list one by one, so that the end user doesn't have to wait and the site collection to be created. The one thing what the example is also does that it actually uh, creates a, a design collection but applies a custom branding on the site collection using out of the box theme. So nothing special, but it does a small modification on the on the theme sign. So let's give it a name. Uh, let's call it webcast as an example. Let's give a, a uh, the URL. Uh, it will be created underneath uh, the root site collection or the root web of what I've selected. We need to provide the administrator and then let's create click create. So we get to the debugging experience. So there's the create click event, and I'm just calling or providing all of my parameters as a 
do this function which is the create site collection which actually has all of the stuff what we need encapsulated in a single function so what i would do is that we first resolve uh, the root site uh, so that's now devcontoso.com so we're going to use that as our tenant admin site so it has the property enabled which i showed in the powershell uh, we kind of create a new site collection as a devcontoso.com slash site slash webcast because i gave that as the url then what we do is that we get a app only access token uh, to that site collection uh, we create a new tenant object, we create a new site creation properties object, uh, we execute the create site, and then finally we execute the query. And the key difference here is that when you execute the tenant or creation of site collections in the cloud, that is actually asynchronous. Uh, so that you have to double check is the process already done or not before you move into the following step. In on-prem, this is actually a synchronous call. So I press the F10 just to go one step forward, um, and now it's creating the site collection. It's gonna be showing me this uh, GIF animation. Well, that's because I, I added that on the default ASPX um, while it's actually doing that. And we get the debugger back in the Visual Studio whenever the site collection creation is actually finalized. Um, this doesn't take usually too long, and there we go. Uh, the site collection is created, but obviously it's dependent uh, on your on your own environment. And then I've added a, just a sample code, which is uh, setting a out of the box team to that just created site collection uh, by using out of the box team name. Pretty simple code using CSAM, but just to demonstrate the capabilities. And let's press F5, so we move on to the browser and we get redirected uh, to the new, newly created site collection which has the custom branding uh, and we can actually just double check that I'm not cheating. Uh, the URL is probably set, uh, contoso slash site slash webcast and so on. In this case, as mentioned, we just applied a custom out of the box branding on the site collection, but just as well, we could create content type, site columns, document libraries, whatever you need uh, based on your business requirements uh, for your custom site collection. Excellent. That's all for this video. Uh, a quick look on the on the code what will be uh, available for download from the blog post. Thank you.